walk in until we're ready. And I say, hey, the ISC electrician is looks live. Remote is missing. Already? Yeah, I know it. If they don't have it in the room, you go to the tech office. Doesn't it look good? I don't know where the tech office is, but it's back in the library. It's not a lot of work. Hmm. Is it just like? And also, this cable is not working. The room? I don't think it's the tech thing, but there's a computer. Mr. Business, I'm tempted to you. Always, there's my last save the phone. Okay. Okay. I'm not holding the box. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Stand in the middle. Like on the stage. Sure. I can tell you the cameras are level. Is it level there? Yeah, I guess we could just do this. If your camera does look like wonky though, it is this a clip or like the, the way you put it in the tripod? Hey. So the clicker was missing? So the the, the white remote that turns right this one now. on and controls it. <laughs> oh, what does that mean? I don't know. Hey, are you guys doing? So, um, I yes. use it on. There are two mods. It looks straighter when you fold it. Pretty sure there's people in here. That's what I'm saying. Class, so, so I'm going to do what they did with that. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. 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 I think it's because of like where we are. Let me. Maybe it's the floor. Mm -hmm. Maybe move it over. I'm like, where it's Does that look any better? Yeah. Take a look. Okay. I still want to show up. The clicker in the IST lecture center is missing. I let you know. Is this your address? Okay, Garrett, tall guy. Okay. You want to be a hazard to stand on the table and try to press the power button? Got you, bro. Green view, please. You don't get to see the brother. Well, he's leaving with third gear. Or a stitch in a chair. Yeah. I don't know. Just that. Here's the one. There you go. Whoa! What were you all using? Just the power bank. I hate it. I'm going to like go. Like, I'm going to leave you. Take it out. Yep. Perfect in here. So, wait, actually. Wait. I know. I just put the egg on you. Dude. It's sort of like a pleasant thing was called. This guy, he goes, 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 he
All right, how loud do you guys think this needs to be? I think that's fine. Wait, are, you actually, right. are you actually trying to like project right now? Or are you just, just talking? <laughs> Can you like try to project like you're about to speak? All right, everybody, welcome. <laughs> That's good. Like, Hello. So there are options with the mic. Is you can hold it, okay. or we have a mic stand that we can set up anywhere you want. So we could potentially set it up here, or you could just like either get closer or. Get Okay. Wait, do I have to touch it on the button or no? Oh, I don't think so. We're giving the laser pointer to me, right? Thank you. Guys, need this. Thank you. 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 <gasps> Whoa! Whoa! So I threw up dang Damn. Oh my goodness, oh, this is a live stream. Oh wait, it's not in there, dude. <laughs> oh wait, is it? No. Do you have the Do you have the link for OTV? I mean, that's the link. The Instagram. No, like the view count. We're not. Okay. Senior projects is live. Come and check it out. Whatever you do. No, <laughs> So we have a for a mother Excuse for the and the one of our cell phones. Yeah. Do you know the time that would be up? Like, when you air the presentation, you can have a couple of Uh, Yeah. That's so much. Yeah. 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 Oh, 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 yeah. Hello. All right. All seniors. All the seniors in this class. Cool. All the seniors who have a project. All the seniors, all the junior, what about the seniors and seniors projects? This is a junior project. Okay, so let's get a couple things uh, simple. Um, the setup. Okay, this is connected to the speakers. So if, you're doing, if, you have, if you have something that has sound, it should be already set up to go through. No, okay, there we go. Okay. Um, there's a microphone in a microphone stand. Okay. Um, it is powered by a switch. Okay, so it's pretty simple. It's off and down. That's on. Okay. Um, so I'm going to leave it off. I do need everybody to use the microphone. Okay, it makes it easier for the audience. Okay. So there's a couple options. You can leave it here and you can just pick it up and hold it. Or if you want to set the stand up right here or somewhere else, you can do that too. It's up to you. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, but I do need to use the microphone to choose the standard. Okay. We have this guy. Okay, we got the laser pointer. There's a pop button here. It's a little dot. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, this is next slide. This is the previous slide. Yeah. What if you have like animations? You gotta click the button multiple times. <laughs> yeah, if they're loaded by clicking on them, you can like I guess. So, like, yep, like this, and slide, and slide. Will it load in a slide? No, it's it's just sort of, it's kind of dangerous. So. Uh, laser pointer. Okay, so like, you know, you gotta think about you're holding the mic, you're gonna hold both, that's up to you. Um, well, I'll put the microphone stand here as a default. Which is a place you don't have to have it here. Okay. Oh, okay. that makes sense. So, this is off. This is on, you might increase it a little bit. This isn't a big room. This isn't a very big room. Do you want to stand at the back? I don't want people to add like Yeah, like sweet, very close to the Yeah, no, I get it. That's perfect. Hi. Did you find it? I found the right this. What are we guessing now? We need this. That. That's what I'm talking about. You're missing your remote. That's what I told you. Anyway, so. Yes, that's it. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to load up the bars. I'm going first. Take away all the Yeah. What? You lost one too. I've heard there's a 10.30. I don't know. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Get a job. I sent it to Eric. I sent it to Eric Top. I didn't, sorry. Hey, watch this live stream. There you go. What was the first person? Ten. The first person Me. Said nine ten. It's a skit. Nine ten. Ten minutes. We're finalizing setups. So wait, the first one. Do you want to do the mic? Yeah. All of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I know that guy. All right, that's me. No, that's not me. Guys, I'm going to put this like this so you do end up setting it up. You may have to leave a little forward to see. But you can technically, like, do that. Put the mic stand here so it's a little more confusing. Here is the camera, guys. Two, four. Don't have to hunch over. So you're going to talk around there? Sorry, I'll try to hold it. Is it? Is this on? This thing is on. There's some cables here. So are we currently streaming? Yeah. Which one's the which one? Guys, it's a Nick, if you want to stare into the camera, it's the one on the right. Stare into the camera? Okay. Is, well, we're using this for like. Is that projector on? Yeah. Why is yeah, that? I don't know why. Why is that? Uh, no, 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 is it this? I'm thinking it is. Yeah. Yo, this is a laser. Oh, 
we are. We've got that. We said. Skipping class. <laughs> You're getting behind. It's a problem. You should come to class. Okay. Uh, I know. It'll be Hello. Good morning. Good Welcome morning. Everybody. Good morning. It's good to see everyone here. Uh, hello. I'm uh, Mr. Brandt or Daniel Brandt. I am the uh, teacher for the senior projects course um, that we are here for today. Um, so we have one presentation during this period for the schedule here. Um, so I just want to say a couple of things really quick to start us off. Um, the audience, if you guys could please, if you have any questions, there'll be plenty of time to ask both after um, the presenter presents, and then there will be some time for you to interact with the presenter um, after they give their presentation up here. Um, I thank you all so much for coming. I expect everyone to be respectful in the audience. Um, give the presenter your utmost attention. Make it a little bit poppy. Did anything? 
but all right. Um, it did. Sort of, a little yeah. bit. Nice. Yeah. Turn the bass down. All right. So our first presenter, Mr. Nick Olson. I'm a computer science major, so this is really embarrassing. Okay. So hello, everybody. Um, my name is Nicholas Olson. I'm the creator, the founder, the programmer of Inner Circle, an OSINT data removal tool. So um, I just kind of want to go over a quick about me. Um, that's going to be the first part of the presentation. On top of that, I'm going to do a background, kind of how did I get here, what I'm going to do moving forward, and on top of that, I'm going to just discuss my project, what you guys are all here for. So a quick about me. So I'm a senior from Overland High School, obviously, I'm in senior projects, but I'm five times certified over. I have my GFAC, my Trace Labs OSINT certification, I have Test Out PC Pro, Network Pro, and Security Pro, so I think I know what I'm talking about a little bit. I went through my cybersecurity pathway through the last four years of my high school experience, and yeah, continuing on my education, I'm going to UCCS as a computer security major. I'm a Keen Foundation Scholar, a CLC Leadership Class Scholar, a Reacher Peak Scholar, and a Greenhouse Scholar, so a lot of cool scholarships coming in there. So, a background for the presentation. Um, I kind of want to flash us back to 2020. I hear a lot of us hate it, and we were stuck inside. One of the most important things about me was I was super introverted. And of course, being an introvert, I got into computer science like every introvert does. And eventually, through a lot of time and research and different things, I stumbled upon OSINT, which is Open Source Intelligence. Basically, when you Google your name and you find something on the internet that's about you or your family, that's open source. And the intelligence portion comes from the information that's available, whether that's an address, a phone number, things that are publicly available that should be private. So on uh, the 26th of June, 2020, I started my first LLC called Mr. Data Eraser. Mr. Data Eraser was a very long process, and it was my first ever experience being an entrepreneur, whatever that means. But it was my first experience doing that. And what it ended up doing was it removed people, which was a very long and tedious process from these websites that have all this public information. For some reason, Zoom Info thought I was worth one to five million dollars and had 25 employees, which was not true. Um, I had me and a lot of time on my hands extra because of COVID. So I started my journey originally because of a website called Delete Me. Delete Me is a pay for privacy kind of website. You have $20 a month for two people and basically they remove you from all of these websites, hundreds of them. And they go through this whole process where they keep checking every month, but it's $229 a year, which I think is absurd to pay for your privacy. There's much better things you can do with $20. You can get 2,609 Icelandic Krona, you can get 12 mandolin slicers, and you can get six pub and pubs. People have priorities, and these are mine, so a lot of better things you could do with a $20 book. So my project, that kind of leads me to how I got here and why I started this original journey. But first, to understand my project, you kind of have to understand how these websites even work. So when you go to these websites, you can see a lot of different information. So we're just taking Walter White from Albuquerque, New Mexico, as an example. In it, you can see his age, you can see his address, you can see relatives of his who conveniently aren't real. Um, but on top of that, the best thing about this is you can see all of this information completely for free. I Googled a name and a relative location. That's all you need. So when it comes to how these websites find this information, it's through just scraping the web. It's going through tax documents and things that are publicly available, that governments especially make publicly available, and it scrapes it and takes it and puts it in a nice little format for people to read. Um, usually it's used for like credit reporting agencies or background checks, but on top of that, it's most of the time used for very malicious activities, whether that be doxing or stalking, it's usually used for some very horrible, horrible things. And I thought that was bad. Um, on top of that, we can see Jesse Pinkman, also conveniently from Albuquerque, New Mexico. We can see his phone number up there. This scrapes pretty much everything. Any social media accounts. I've seen social security numbers before. I've seen so much information on here that it is unbelievable. So I needed to do something about it. And why inner circle? Why would I want to make this project? The biggest reason, removal. That's kind of the utmost priority for me. Spending so much time on these removal processes, spending up to 10 hours per person, it wasn't doable. As someone who is an adult, right? I can't even imagine doing 40 hours a week 
on top of having to remove yourself from these websites, it's ridiculous. And that's what these websites really do capitalize on. On top of that, I wanted to learn a little bit more about the web and web exploitation. Um, the biggest thing about it is I'm a, I'm, I'm a cybersecurity guy. I'm really bad at web exploitation, and I wanted to learn more about how different things worked and how to kind of delve into it a little bit more. On top of that, I'm also not a great programmer, so I wanted to work on my code a little bit more. I wanted to practice. I wanted to do different things there. And finally, I just wanted to do it for fun. It was something that I was really going to enjoy, and that was kind of my overarching goal. So on top of that, my other main goals, just more particularly for the project, I wanted it to be fast. I wanted it to get a task done quickly that I assigned it. I wanted to get it done efficiently. I want it to be as quick as possible and good at what it does. On top of that, I want it to be accessible. I want an everyday person to just be able to click on something and use it. I want it to be fully open source so people who are a little more technically savvy can easily do this. And then finally, I wanted it to be useful. There are hundreds and thousands of records, even millions of records on the internet. And if I can remove hundreds at a time, that's a very good goal, and I'm continuing to work at this goal long term. So uh, for my logo, I decided that I was going to make it as simple as possible because there's a joke on the internet that the more money a company makes, the simpler their logo gets. I'm not a graphic designer, I just use text. Um, I, I'm, very, I'm very simple with that, and the dot slash at the beginning is from an operating system called Linux where you type in dot slash and you run a program. It's an insider program joke but I think it's pretty cool and it's simple, like Facebook or Microsoft. So going over to my advisors, these were the people that really helped me with my project. These were the people that really inspired everything about my project. Um, first, Kelly Rivers, she's an assistant teaching professor at the com uh, computer science branch of Carnegie Mellon University. Um, she gave me so much direction, it's actually insane. I would have had no idea where to start if it wasn't for Kelly here. And she was the biggest inspiration for me considering moving forward and, she gave me a lot of direction, and I'm very grateful for it. Um, on top of that, I have my lawyer, Rich Splide. Um, this guy helped me for the first three months. He looks you know, a little goofy, but not watching, so we're good. Um, <laughs> he's a lawyer whose practice focuses on data security and data privacy. And basically, for the first three months, he read so many terms of services for me, it is actually insane. Um, I sent him probably about 200. And he read every single one. And after the three-month period, he's like, listen, I got to start charging you as a full-time customer. And I'm like, OK, no thanks. But for the first three months, he was absolutely vital to my success. He gave me a lot of summaries on how these different terms of service works. And it was a very, very useful person to have on my team. On top of that, we have Marielle Klosterman. Um, she's a cyber threat researcher in an unknown company. But one of the things she's very, very good at is open source intelligence. And she's good at having connections in that industry. Of, she gave me so much invaluable information on how to proceed with my project and how to continue that I don't think this project would have been possible without her. And then on top of that, my other two advisors, I have Austin King, a cyber threat researcher as well at IBM, and then Kate McDonald, a teacher here at Overland. Um, these people were both very vital to my success. I didn't utilize them as much as I hoped in my whole project, but at the same time, what I did end up doing, I used them for emotional support quite a bit because this year was hard and it was hard for everybody but these two people really supported me through it no matter what venture I was going through. So that leads me to my actual project. And what it mainly consists of is something called web scraping. Now we talked about it a little bit, but web scraping is basically taking information from the internet and going through it with a bot or something that automatically does it for you and basically gathering all that information. So each website has HTML code. And the way you go through it is through a couple different tools. Beautiful Soup is one of them. Um, so the code is kind of hard to read, but a lot of it is just kind of showing off how Beautiful Soup works. Beautiful Soup is just a way that you can run through every single bit of the code and the presentation and different things like that. So like if I wanted to run through a specific website and I can absolutely scrape through it, then what I end up doing, I end up saying, okay, Beautiful Soup, give me all of the HTML code of this website and then look for a specific instance of a specific thing. So if I was looking for a picture, I can pull a different picture from a certain variable, and I can do a lot of things there. On top of that, there's Selenium. Originally, during my project, I decided that I wanted to make a bot. And I was going to have a bot do it for me, because the more human it looked, the better. Um, this was an idea that was eventually scrapped. But for the first portion of probably, I want to say, four or five months, this was absolutely useful. Um, well, the way it works is it's basically a bot that just 
acts as a human. It fills out information. So in this example down here, you can kind of see the fact how you're filling out a last name and a first name, and you're filling in different information by looking human, um, which is really, really interesting, and it's something that was very vital to my first person on my project. On top of that, we have Cloud Scraper. Cloud Scraper is basically a bypass of a lot of different verification methods that you use. Um, so, for example, there's something called Cloudflare. Cloudflare is an anti-bot detection system, essentially. And basically, it flags down every single bot detection. Um, and it's like, hey, this person, it's like a night guard or a bodyguard um, at a nightclub. It's, he's at the front door, you can't get past him, but Cloud Scraper is like the back door at a nightclub that you kind of get in by additional random means. So it was a very useful tool. I used it a lot through my projects, and it was very, very helpful. And then finally, Regex. Um, this was probably the most useful out of all the tools because it's so widely available. Um, Regex basically works as a text matching software. Um, it's probably been around for 40, 50 years now at this point. And basically what Regex does is it matches certain characters in an expression. So let's just say a book. And you were looking for the, every single instance of a main character's name. If you're looking for that specific thing, Regex can do just that. It can find every single instance of that specific name. It can find every specific instance of an account. It can find everything, right? So any sort of expression. And it looks a little confusing because it's a lot of jargon. Um, and it's a lot of random characters. But that's the kind of cool thing about regex. I use um, some very helpful tools like ChatGPT to help write that regex because learning regex was very hard to do. And it's something that within the six months period, I did not have time for. But very, very useful, very helpful. So that leads me to this guy. This is Daniel Sobzik. He's actually in the audience right now. Uh, I didn't have a better photo of him, so I just used the one sleeping. Um, this guy was absolutely vital in my success because I was talking to him about my project. I went, hey, uh, here's my project, here's kind of how it works. Now, this guy is conveniently enough just a cyber genius. And on top of that, he said, why don't you just do this thing? And I go, huh, that's a really good idea. So I started researching. He turned my seven step process of having to verify and go through the bot steps and do different things into four. He turned it into four steps by just some simple, actual things that I just overlooked completely. It was insane. And this guy was absolutely, once again, vital to my success during this project. So I got to say thank you to him. So that leads me to what he did recommend. And he recommended cookies and post verification. Now, what is a cookie? What is post verification? We're getting there, I promise. So cookies, this look pretty good, right? Uh, unfortunately, on the web, they're not as cool and not as good looking. Um, they contain information like this. It's a lot of random jargon, and it's a lot of things that are very, very useful to us as programmers, but usually go overlooked by people who just use the web every single day. It's a bunch of information that basically identifies you. So every single person has a different cookie. Every single person has something where it's like, oh, I'm a snickerdoodle cookie, and I have this sort of information. It's basically how websites use themselves to identify you as a user. Now, post verification is another thing that's very important, and I kind of skipped over it. So, post verification is one of the things on the web where it's basically sending a letter and someone receiving the letter. Post verification is just telling a website, hey, here's a set of data that I need, and here's how to match it. So, that leads me to headers and data. This part was absolutely vital because inside of every single post verification, there's this set of information. Headers look something like this. It contains very basic information that's set in stone pretty much all the website. It contains information, let's see if I can point, like the authority and what language you're using and how you can get to where you're going. So for example, the refer point down here, it shows you where it's supposed to be going because websites are dumb. And that's kind of the simple way to put it. Websites are very, very dumb. And the way you can end up bypassing that is just by sending something like this. It knows where to go. It's being labeled directions. It's giving that information. And that's kind of how this works. So that leads me to CAPTCHAs. Um, for this project, I had to learn a lot about CAPTCHAs because in the data portion of my project, you needed to verify somehow. CAPTCHAs were the best way to do that. Now, CAPTCHAs, I had no idea how they worked before. But now that I do, it's pretty cool. Um, so once again, like I said, websites are pretty dumb. And they have no idea on how CAPTCHAs are working, right? So for example, um, millions of CAPTCHAs are solved every day. How do those know where to go? Every single time you fill out one of these CAPTCHAs, it generates a token. 
a token that looks something like what we saw in the cookie, similar to this. So similar to all of this, it looks something like this PF session ID down here. It's a bunch of random strings, numbers, and letters that makes up a very unique identifier for you specifically. That's why you have to do it and prove you're human. So the website knows that, okay, someone solved this. I'm going to take in this token and I'm going to send it out to somebody else. The way I kind of bypass this is through harvesters. Now, harvesters basically work as it pops up a separate tab in a separate window and you fill it out and it generates a token for you. Now, tokens for Google Captcha and different things that you solve are valid for two minutes. So I had two minutes, a two minute window, to basically fill out all of this information and send it off. That was the, that was the easiest part, which was kind of funny about my project because I would have never expected this part, the bypassing, to be the easiest, but it definitely was. So this is how people do sneaker botting and clothes botting and how they get concert tickets very easily. They fill out the capture beforehand so they can bypass that verification method later down the road. So that leads me to the post verification and the extra data. So this data is very unique to every single individual that you're looking up and trying to remove. For example, this one is in a website called Intellius and you have the full name, you have the different types of email addresses, and then you have the capture response, which is pulled from the actual um, harvester token generation thing. And then on top of that, it gives the unique ID and then the cookies. So this was all very, very useful to me. And when you send this data, both in tandem with the other request for the headers, you get a removal. And that was kind of what this guy Daniel proposed to me. He was like, you should just completely bypass the captcha and then go on. And I said, that's a fantastic idea. So that's what I did. And that's kind of the general gist of my project. So I wanted to give just a, a general timeline because this has changed so much. Um, in October, I wanted to finish my website and start researching how to build a web scraper and what a web scraper even was and different things like that. In November, I wanted to begin building it. In April, I wanted to finish it. And I wanted to finalize a bash script, which is a program that also runs in Linux, something that can make it easy by just typing in dot slash and then whatever program name. And then in summer, I wanted it to market to industry pros, people who really knew what they were doing in the field. So here's my second timeline. Um, reality set in very quickly in January that I was very optimistic at the, at the beginning. I definitely had no idea in this timeline what in the world I was doing. Between November and April, I had not a clue of how to do what I was doing. But through a lot of Google and a lot of research, I kind of figured it out and eventually we got to here. So January 23, I wanted to finish the top five biggest uh, people search websites, or what they call them. And I wanted to finish that. And then in March, I wanted to compile a main program, something people can run on their computer, like an EXE or some sort of file. And then on top of that, in April, I wanted to present to you guys. And then in May, I wanted to discuss with data brokers and people who are very big, like Discover, who are doing removals about, hey, my program is doing what you're doing, but more efficient. Here's how it works. So here's how my actual timeline went. Um, in August 2022, I started my research. In November, I started building a web scraper. In December, I finished my first website, and it worked great. But conveniently enough, in the exact same month, it changed its code for the first time in 15 years. Um, obviously, during my senior project, that's the best time to change code, but it's fine. It hurt a little bit. So in January, I had to get all the way back to square one. I had to start completely over on my project. And this is when I started implementing the requests and the post verification and all those advanced concepts. And then in February, I didn't do much. I'm going to be totally honest. There was not much that I did for my project, but it's fine. I have until April. There's plenty of time to do it. Um, there was not plenty of time. And I finished one website that actively worked. In April, I cleaned more code. I made it look nicer. And then today I'm presenting to you all. But this is something that I'm going to stop right after I'm finished with this presentation. I really think it's a very good tool for me to learn kind of how to actually program more and how to be a better programmer. So in June, I'm going to try to finish everything. I'm going to try to finish all my programs and all the different things now that I have some extra time on my hands. And then in August, I'm going to make it fully open source. I'm not going to sell it to anybody. I'm not going to market it to anybody. I'm just going to make it public to whoever wants to download it and use it. So over this time, I faced a lot of roadblocks. Number one, ever-changing code, ever-changing web owners, ever-changing everything. Everything was so inconsistent that it was hard for me to keep up. So for example, in the websites, the websites change code month after month after month, especially most of the more popular ones, they change in order to stop exactly what I'm doing. 
They change the variable names and different things. They make them random letters. And there's no way that I can pull every single one because I have to rewrite my code every time they make a change. There were hundreds of changes and I couldn't keep up with it. On top of that, there were other alternatives. Um, there was discover, there was delete me. There were different people that did what I did because they had employees. But I honestly wanted to stick with the project because I knew there was nothing like this. There was nothing like what I was doing. On top of that, I had other classes. Um, I had other different things that I was doing and I had final projects coming up and I was procrastinating. But the biggest thing that ultimately affected me was my crippling case of senioritis. Um, senior year is hard and it's hard for a lot of people. But at the same time, for me, I was ready to move on probably in January. I was ready to graduate, I was ready to be finished and this really got in the way of my project because I just kept putting it off. I said I had enough time, I had enough time. I didn't have enough time, but it's okay because things still got done. Projects still got completed in no sense, but I still have a lot to do and I still am very optimistic moving forward. So on top of that, I finished Intellius and I finished People Finders. Intellius eventually went away, leaving me with just People Finders as a, the only removal tool that exists for this current website. And it's very, very useful and very helpful. And it's just kind of a general overview. So here's my bibliography and thank you guys. Was it? I, I probably should ask, any questions? Sweet. Am I good? Okay, so I'm gonna be hosting a table thing over there. If you guys wanna come look at my code, come look at my websites, you're more than welcome to. But thank you guys again. Oh, well, if you're 18, when you buy a car or buy a house or buy a phone, like, you can rent an apartment or you know, do anything like that a normal person does, it basically pulls that. Yeah, so look, now you have the opt out request in the email, and then you just click on this. Angelina, did you stop the recording? I forgot to like, deliver mine. And then, and then you're done. Like that, that's all that 
you need to do. You just need to click one button and type your name. And then, and then, and then it requests confirmation. And I did that same part. You guys want to look it up too? Uh, such a few people. Uh, I, I, I found this guy. Yeah, no, I remember when I pulled up your. Oh, was it this? Yeah, no, it was this. I just looked at the last name. So You have another problem. Yeah, I know. It's a very uncommon last name, but. It's very complicated. You might not, because you're so young, but like. It usually takes it with people who have like actual <laughs> records. Okay. Use the same. So yeah, wow. so it uses the exact same one. Why? Yeah, you, you might you might not pop up. Yeah, yeah you're not 48. Let's go. So you're too young. <laughs> but if you search up if you search up your parents, right, they're gonna pop up for sure. So it's like usually information like this is coming from my house. I already did from this one. But he, he might actually be so much on there, so he can show him down. Yeah, because there's still a lot. That is definitely not him. Oh, they already know his address, so it's just not You know his address? Yes. I, so, so I've, I've used I've used him as my test for every single website that I've ever coded and ever programmed. Um, I've used him for every single one, but yeah. So he's basically removed from everything because I used him as an example. Yeah, I know. No kidding, right? But I mean, I mean, Kevin may is still on there. So yeah, oh, Kevin that's that's really a little. Instagram. So people. Uh, yeah, no, oh, no, I'm, I'm not doing that guy any favors. You have space. Like yeah, Mr. Brand, now you're removed. That was like it was a win-win situation. It was a win-win situation. <laughs> I I used you as information, and then you got removed. It's, oh my gosh! Awesome. It's like awesome. you know when someone sits here. Let's not do that. Well, not your own parents, dude. <laughs> like that's that's a better solution. You're just teaching them. No. Anyone else want to try? I mean, it's pretty cool. I'm sure. Yeah, you should do it. You should do it, Kat. Well, you can put the word up. Because I'm the parents name. I mean, I would love to use it. I know on that one. <laughs> Daniel, you want to remove yourself? I know. I'll start asking questions for I'll start with you. I'll start with you. I'll start with you. I'll start with you. It is. No. It's not. Um, but oh, probably. That'd be really nice. Actually, it's live streaming. It's live streaming. Why is there a screwdriver here? Is this yours? Thank you. They're very up. like press this back here. So that's not yours. She has actual chairs, though. Those are just. Yeah. This is all that This looks familiar. And like these ones. Girl mm -hmm. But I think it's So it might actually be from Tech Mail. Oh, oh. Let's go, Nick. Oh, yeah, it's great from fucking man. I love that. Uh, Did you hear each comment? So there were oh, a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why are you down with your father? You think just keep scrolling down? That's just an ad. No, this is. 
So sometimes it matches the wrong record. Right? Yeah, yeah. so last name, right? Just got so like Walter White okay. matched with like four other Walter Whites. Walter White. <laughs> it's like the and second and page. Skyler White was not like it, it was a whole thing. So all this is my wife. Oh, was that? You didn't, you didn't like inspect all this school. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, is do you know if Mr. Craig is coming here every period? What? Do you think Mr. Craig's coming here every period? Well, I think it's for whatever class, whenever whenever she has a class. So she has like a period. She is short. But we can try to make more seating available. Yeah, go ahead. You're wrong. I'll show it to you. Kirk came in yesterday. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right, Will. Mr. Graham, what's the next presentation? On the board. Sorry. Sorry. Silly goose. <laughs> ben said, thank you so much for the Breaking Bad reference. I love you, Nick. <laughs> uh, Nick said, congratulations. I sent it to you. <laughs> it's something you wanted to watch. I knew you couldn't make it, but okay, next thing you do. Next thing you do. Four years from now. Uh, who's next? <laughs> well, it is, but we, we have. Where did he I go? Know, Garrett. Garrett's next. Gabe Rock. Where did he go? Where, where did where did Eric go? Or, oh my gosh. Garrett. Yeah, I called I called Garrett. Garrett. Where yes, where did Garrett go? No idea. Okay, because she probably needs to at this point. Yes? Oh, thank you. <laughs> no way, bro. Yeah, I told one to do because why are you doing this for me like that? What do you need for this? What do you need? This all works. I I I was, you like, so, I don't know. 
You know, it's part of I think he's gonna. Oh, 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 Let's go kick him out. And that's funny. It's part of the Great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. 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 Y
I don't have to see you. He can deal with that. What? Uh, I'm not the other person. It threw me off. It's like so gross. I hated it so much. Okay. Um, okay. Let's stay here. here. So the key gets flipped. It doesn't fucking look like a turn upside down. It doesn't fucking look like a turn upside down again. It looks the wrong way. Really quick. You can figure out what's going on. I'm not. Is there anything going on? Is there anything More crashes. So we could go like last week. Was that her fault? No, I was going to say, so now she didn't crash, she's going to get That would probably be the best, because the second fight came from me. I don't know, it's probably the opposite. It's probably the opposite. It's probably the opposite. It's probably the opposite. Honestly, the opposite of something she's done, it's like, can I go back to work for a week? And I'm out. 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 Bad, dude, the prehistoric era. Daniel, Nick, Ben, ask that. <laughs> Dive in the river. I'm going to watch out. Well, I'm going to We're going to camp for three, four days. Come on, back. I'd be down to go camping. Not in the new Mexico desert. Why? Who the fuck is uh, yeah, just say, uh, I don't see it. Why? I don't see it. It's every other thing. Or say, no, I'm pretty sure that's just how we get on. It's not very nice. It's not very nice. Here, do you want the stand or are you going to hold the mic? To share. Oh, whose turn is it? It's your turn. Oh my god. Yeah, it's actually your turn. <laughs> oh my goodness. You get to actually give the fact on the day. You can do it during lunch. I feel so honored. Oh my god. I'm. My fact is better. 
to the last one. Wait, if you want to give more facts, you want to just have somebody give you a fact and sometimes it's like a passing page? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. You totally can do And then we just go in the order of the seats. <laughs> or we can go in the order of the presentation. Maybe. So like, so like before the presentation, you have to give an ice attack. Spitball, spitball. I want to have the... <laughs> Jake may or may not be giving an ice on fact today. It is day day. <laughs> I have you. <laughs> I, have your, I have your class. <laughs> I have senior projects. I forgot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's this doesn't feel like it. Uh, did you know Reykjavik is the capital of Iceland? Really? Yes. I can't think of any other like full facts or something. Yeah. Man. You know that I have any in Iceland? There's no McDonald's in Iceland. What'd you say? Horses cannot be exported or imported. Iceland is beautiful, according to one of the cards. There is 23 different types of crustate, what was it called? Cetaceans in the seas around Iceland. Oh, whales. Which includes, the no, whales I think it's cetaceans. Oh, the whales. That includes whales and dolphins. They don't have an army. They said there's no they army. Are valid. Uh, is it, isn't it the only NATO country without an army? Okay, I got one. Come up here. Oh. Oh my god, to all the people, all the, <laughs> the two people on the live stream. Yeah, hello to two people on the live stream. Okay, so Icelanders address each other by their first name even when talking to a professional or high-ranking government official. Iceland's president, Olafur Ragnar Grimison, is formally addressed and casually addressed as Olafur. Also, telephone directories are alphabetically arranged by first name. Oh, did you hear that, Daniel? Whoa. <laughs> That's weird that they're the the telephone or what you say is arranged by first name. The telephone book. Yeah. <laughs> the telephone book. They have a phone book. That's book funny that they're arranged by first name. That's definitely unique. Makes sense. It's only like six months. Uh, she is. Oh, what? I actually thought she might. Who's her closer? Who else is coming? Good morning, Overland High School. This is Ryan and Teresa, members of student leadership. At this time, I would like to invite you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Those of you who wish to join us, please stand and be blessed. I don't know what to do. 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 I don't know Ah. Ah. Otis, I'm going to be looking at the camera a lot. <laughs> All right, to my beautiful and wonderful audience who is here with us today. Yeah! Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, hey! hey! Yeah! Come on in, find a seat. I was about to give things, but come on in. Hey. Uh, I don't. I don't know who just propped the door open, but I don't want the door propped open because there's going to be banging outside, apparently. You can leave the door. There's a little thing in the door. You can leave that little chuck. There's like people doing construction. I don't know what they're doing, but they are. Okay, to all my new people, I think there's two of you. Um, please uh, show utmost respect to our presenters during this period. Um, and know that there's plenty of time if you have questions. Uh, I encourage you to formulate some questions and ask our presenters. Um, after they give their formal presentation, you can ask questions, and then also after that, per the schedule up here, um, there will be time for you to kind of interact one on one with the presenter and their project. Um, or there should be plenty of time to do that. 
Um, but good morning and welcome everyone. Great to have you all. Um, we'll get started here. I'm going to do this. What's up, guys? Hi. Uh, my name is Garrett Foster. This is my final senior project presentation. And yeah, let's get started. So a little about me. I'm a senior at Oakland High School. Um, my past experiences in uh, these engineering classes consist of Mr. Grant's first year teaching, actually, tech projects. Uh, I took that, took two years with uh, Ms. Greg, with CAD. That was good times. Um, and yeah, ended off here, senior projects, last year. Um, this is a little more specific. Um, I'm an avid fisherman. Uh, this is specific towards this project, um, as you'll we'll see here in a second. So a little overview, overview. What is my project? What am I doing? What did I do all year? All year, I created a custom live fishing reel. Now, what I really wanted this reel to be was really real. Now, in order to do this, I needed to 3D print it. And that's what I did. Made a fully 3D printable fly fishing reel. Now, what is a fly reel? What is the difference? So uh, here are two pictures. Uh, on the left is just the rod and the reel. You know, um, pretty standard stuff. Just looks like normal rod, normal reel. Um, nothing too crazy. But on the right, so on the right, that's actually what I created. That's what I made uh, in SolidWorks. 3D designed it. Um, that not not that specific one. You'll see. You'll see here in a second. But uh, that's what basically what I made. All you do, fly fishing reel, and you actually get to see a little bit of this in action. Just, you know, whipping the john, getting the line out there, getting the bait out there, catching the fish, yes sir. All right. Now, uh, project advisors. So these are the people that actually helped me throughout uh, my project. Any questions I had, anything like that, these are the people that I went to. Um, starting with my professional advisor, his name is Malik, um, Malik Shapur. He is a mechanical engineer. He graduated from the University of Michigan. Um, and then here we got some advisors or uh, more support advisors. Um, these are the people that uh, I went to, but you know, not as frequently as the professional. Um, we got Mr. Man, you know, physics teacher, uh, asked him any physics questions, anything related to you know torque and uh, circular motion, as that's what the reel is. Um, then we got uh, Jeff Foster. He's actually my pops. He's an architect, so he knows a lot about materials and a lot about all of that general stuff. So that's what I asked him about. Then we got uh, Victor. This guy he goes to CU Denver. Uh, he's studying engineering, so you know another person I can you know uh, ask questions to related with designs, with uh, anything like that. Then we got another one, uh, Rusty. He's my uncle. He is someone that got me into fishing, and um, you know that's someone I went and asked to about like what do you want in a reel? What do you uh, what makes a reel good? So he's uh, that, that's kind of his role in the project. Now, for my logo, Foster's Finest. Now, as you know, my last name is Foster, and Foster, he only creates the finest. Yes, sir. All right. Now, the color. As you can tell, it's like green, green hint, as is, you know, the presentation background. Um, and this is just to represent nature, as, you know, nature is green, beautiful grass, trees, you know what I'm saying? Now, um, we also got some mountains back there, some green mountains. Uh, again, just representing, you know, wildlife, nature, as that's project was kind of based around. Now, uh, we got project timeline. So uh, this is the original timeline that I thought of. This is um, this is uh, what I thought what the year would look like. But you know, it kind of looked like it. It was a little different. But you'll see that in a second. Um, so we're starting off uh, in October. Uh, the idea was to begin researching real, real sizes, gear ratios, uh, materials, um, and yeah. Uh, going into November, it was uh, more finalizing research, doing finishing anything else I needed to learn, um, then actually designing the first reel. Uh, then December, um, printing out the first reel, printing out the first prototype, testing the prototype, and then begin to improve on and design the second prototype. Going on into January, um, same type of deal, you know, print out the reel that was designed in the previous month, test it out. Uh, make any improvements that I need to, and design the next one. 
Um, same process for February, but just with, you know, real four. Um, March was the month where I was going to print the final reel um, out of the four that I made, the final one, um, the best one. And yeah, and then April was going to be the time where, uh, you know, I worked on this presentation uh, and actually tested the reel uh, in the real world. All right. So the design process, uh, as you can see in the previous slide, um, there was a lot of this, the engineering design process. Now, all this process is, is just asking, you know, ask um, uh, what can make this real better? What can make this stronger? What can make this, you know, X, Y, Z? Then you gotta imagine, how can, I, how can I make it stronger? How can I do this? How can I do that? Then just, you know, design it in, uh, you know, any software, design it, then print it, improve. And uh, you'll see uh, that I use this um, process many times throughout this year in order to create the best 3D printing reel that I could. Now, let's start with the reel. This is the first uh, prototype that I made. Um, pretty, pretty basic, pretty simple. Um, uh, here you can see it uh, consists of three parts. Here we got the, boom, right there, we got the cap. Then we got the inner piece right here. Then we got the outer piece. Um, names are pretty, uh, pretty uh, self-explanatory. This piece basically just slides onto that. Then this piece pops on top of that and basically condenses it all together. And you can see it all actually right there, um, all together. And uh, SolidWorks, that is the program that I use to create uh, all of my, all of my uh, reels. And um, yeah. Now, roadblocks. Um, roadblocks were the first reel. What, what, what did I not like about it? First of all, it was very clunky. Um, as you know, is for the first prototype, um, it didn't work as you know intended. It was pretty rough, pretty clunky. Um, uh, you can tell it was pretty cheap. Uh, and yeah, secondly, the weight. Um, you can't tell from this picture, it is all actually infill. So what that means is basically all of it is condensed with plastic and there's no like, holes in between the uh, print. So that means it's pretty heavy compared to, you know, uh, standard reels that you buy uh, on the internet or at Best Pro, I don't know. Um, then the appearance, it, you know, it doesn't look that good. I mean, I wouldn't want to be showing that off to my friends, that's all I'm saying. But um, the appearance was also something I really wanted to make sure was, um, you know, good because uh, if I wanted to actually make a reel that uh, I liked, I wanted to make sure I look, uh, it looked good and I liked looking at it. So yeah. Now, so getting back into the design process after I um, printed out the first one, tested it, boom, 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 figured out what's wrong. Now we're on reel two. Um, what, what did I improve on? Well, as you can tell, probably immediately, um, you can see I added holes in it. Quite simply, just to make it look a little cooler, it also helps with the weight situation, take some weight out of it. Um, so that's the first thing. Then um, I added threads. I added threads to the axle and the cap. Now, the idea of adding threads to the axle and cap was to sort of screw the cap onto the axle instead of just, you know, shoving it in and hoping uh, friction keeps it all together. Um, and unfortunately, even though uh, I thought it was a good idea, printing, 3D printing uh, threads is just very, very difficult because it has to be so precise and it just simply doesn't work out uh, 3D printing. So that leads me to the roadblocks. Um, again, the threads, the threads didn't work as intended. Um, and you'll actually be able to see over there um, after the presentation, you can mess around with all of the prototypes. Um, and yeah, so uh, again, bad threads didn't work as intended. So I scrapped that idea completely. And then also, as you can see, um, the axle, um, what the, you know, whole thing revolves around, um, snap. Um, and yeah, so again, going back to the engineering process, gotta, gotta improve on it. So gotta improve on it in the third reel. What did I do? I improved on it right there, boom. Created a new axle design. Now, what this design does is basically, instead of right here, boom, instead of the axle being printed on top of the outer piece, now I took the axle out of the situation, created this hole, and then uh, right here, some support right there to make it a little stronger. And the idea was simply to glue the axle into that uh, right there, into boom, right here, 
uh, to make it a little stronger. And uh, yeah, that actually worked very well. Um, and I stuck with that design. Now, furthermore, um, the bearing, bearing system. So like I said before, the reel was very clunky. It didn't, you know, it didn't spin as good as I wanted it to. It, uh, it just didn't work as, as good as I intended. So in order to fix it, I added a bearing. Now, right here, this is not a bearing, that is a hole. And that hole is for the bearing. So all, all I did was created a hole in the inner piece where I can put the bearing through. And then the idea is, is that the axle slides right through the bearing, so the whole system would spin around that bearing. Um, and that works actually really well. Um, but unfortunately, uh, more problems arised, as you know, one could expect, I guess. Um, the handle, uh, right here. That piece was way too small, way too brittle, and snapped off basically immediately after it was done printing. So that is something I needed to improve on on the next reel. And um, even though I added a bearing system, uh, even though it made it a lot better, it still didn't spin as good as I wanted it to. So um, that's another thing that got in the way. Um, and also, so since everything is plastic on this reel, it kind of feels like a toy. So like, you know, it's, it's just not as uh, quality, I guess, as other reels like metal reels. Um, so in order to do, in order to fix this, boom, uh, I added another bearing system. Not only did that help um, the spinning aspect of the reel, but it also helped the um, feel of it. It felt a lot better, a lot stronger. It felt like one piece. Uh, and just adding uh, another bearing helped it a lot. So as you can see, the same, same idea. Basically one bearing goes there, another bearing goes there. And then the action goes right between both. And then it spun actually really well. Uh, good enough to use it in the real world, as you'll see here in a second. Um, and another thing, what, what else did I do? I added, it's called, I call it the cap pin system. You'll see how that works in a second. Furthermore, I added the connecting piece to connect the actual reel to the rod. Um, and yeah, that's all that the reel for was. And this was actually the final variation of the reel. Now, Roadblocks. What did I not like about the final variation? Well, most reels have what's called a brake system or, um, yeah, a brake system. And all it does, you know, uh, sounds how it sounds, it slows the reel down so it doesn't spin freely like mine does. Um, so the idea is if the reel is spinning that way, if you can imagine it spinning that way, there's a system, and usually uh, these companies use cork is uh, what they use. Uh, in order to implement friction into their system to implement a force in that way. So it just counteracts the, uh, you know, the spinning, the spinning motion and just uh, instead of the reel spinning freely, it will, you know, slow down. Um, and also, uh, the actual connecting piece, as you see here, was actually too big for the rod that I had. Um, this is probably something I should have measured, but um, being the silly engineer I am, I didn't. So. Um, that was also something that got in the way and that I didn't like about the final reel. Now, the pin system. How does this work? Why, why is this better? Well, first, um, in order for this to work, there's going to be a hole right uh, in, the, in the cap right there on that side. And all you do is slide the cap onto the axle, line the holes up, then slide the pin through the cap, connecting the pieces together, holding the entire reel together. And uh, this is better simply because the system I had before, when you put the cap, when you put the cap in, um, you, there was no way of taking it off. So if you, once you assembled the reel, you know you couldn't disassemble it, which is something I didn't like, and most reels um, uh, on the market today uh, implement. So what I wanted to do was make it so you can take apart the reel and put it back together anytime you wanted to, and this allowed me to do that. Now, my research, going into research, what did I research? Primarily, um, I researched a lot in materials, brake system, bearings, and lubricants. Now, starting with uh, materials. Uh, since I 3D printed, there are many filaments that I could use for 3D printing, and what I found most effective was ABS. ABS was not only cost effective, but it was strong and heat uh, resistant. So that is the material I used to uh, print all my reels out, and for the brake system, um, as I said before, uh, brakes use cork. 
I found this through research, research break systems. Uh, thought if I could implement any, I would try, uh, but unfortunately I didn't. And for the bearings, I wanted to use bearings that um, you know are very common. Um, so one of the most common bearings are fidget spinners. So uh, I used fidget spinner bearings uh, to I used fidget spinner bearings uh, to implement into my reel. So that's what I did. And then for lubricants, now even though I didn't talk about this and it's actually not in the final reel right now, um, lubricants is something that if you do want to print this out. Um, you can add on if you want to maybe, maybe make it uh, feel a little better. But um, a lot of research went into that, and even asking my professional advisor, um, he helped a lot with lubricants because uh, he actually uh, brought to my attention that some lubricants is actually very dangerous to plastic and can melt it, something I didn't know. So yeah, um, and that's about it for the research. Now, real world performance. What were the pros of the real? Well, first, it worked. Um, even though it was all plastic and it uh, was pretty brittle, it still worked, um, and it didn't break. Um, not only that, but the reel felt good. The reel was smooth. Um, casting it was uh, quite easy, even though it required a little bit more finesse because there was no handbrake system. Um, even though it required a little bit more finesse, it still worked as intended. Now, um, uh, as I stated before, the connecting piece for the reel um, actually didn't fit because the connecting piece was too big, but I went around it and I used it as well. All right, now here is what a lot of you have all been waiting for. So here is the real world example, the real world test. This is the music I use, so um, even though it's not my double break. Mystically multi-sir. Enjoy the long lasting freshness long after the clean. Zero sugar. Rockstar cat zero. Alright. That was the real world presentation. Um, I mean, uh, example. Um, that was actually yesterday. I had a lot of fun. Pop one fish was my camera, right? Um, but yeah, it's, it does work. You know, it's pretty good. So, all right, uh, future improvements. Um, even though uh, this is like the kind of ending of the project for Overland, for um, my time at Overland, I'm still going to work on it. And what I want to do is implement an actual brake system. 
as from using it in the real world, I realized how important that actually is, as you know, the line can just fly out and you know get super tangled, which happened many times. Um, and yeah, so I also uh, just need to fix the connecting piece, you know, as it was too big. You can, you'll actually be able to see it over there. Uh, and another thing I want to do is paint the reel. As even though I got lucky because we had black filament and that color is actually pretty good, um, I also do want to paint it and maybe make it look a little cooler. And in the future, maybe I'll use some lubricants to just make the reel spin a little better. And yeah, that is the bibliography. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, sir. Okay, so for the final design of your reel, are you planning on uh, selling it and launching it for reviews like open source? So, um, actually, this is something I did think about, and I think I will publish it, um, but make it free. I probably won't ask for any money um, simply because uh, I don't care then. But um, I will probably share the. Uh, you know, design with the world. So yeah, sure. What what rod did you attach to the? Yeah. So um, basically, uh, it's like this old fly fishing rod that my pops had. Um, to be cost effective, I just use that. Actually, worked pretty good. Um, and yeah, I did not make the rod. That is for sure. It's just like an old one. But yeah. So in your project, you talked a lot about braking systems and different things like that. If you were to implement that into your project, how would you do so? That's a good question. And that's actually why I didn't, because it's I, don't, I really don't know how. Um, if I were to, it would most likely be um, just simply just adding a layer of um, some layer of another material that adds friction to the system between the inner and the outer piece to you know slow down. So that's probably the answer. Um, I saw that in one of the pictures that you showed at the very beginning, it was metal. So I've never thought about if you were to create a final design, like potentially CNC it. Um, that's a good question. I probably won't simply because um, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of creating a 3D printed reel. But um, also, I didn't design it to be um, you know easily CNC because um, usually, uh, to my knowledge, you have to like uh, print it on a flat surface and then bend the metal, and that's just something that. Um, it's not uh, close to being designed right now, but yeah. So when it comes to your process of, you know, you designed four reels, right? Every single time there was something that was improved upon. How did you kind of go about studying those improvements and researching those improvements and implementing those? Yeah, so um, basically the way I went about it is, you know, I would create, after the first system, I would create it. I would diagnose, you know, what I didn't like about it, um, what I wanted it to be like, but it didn't maybe have, and just take that, like, for example, maybe it wasn't so smooth. How would I, you know, make it smoother? Um, a lot of systems uh, use uh, bearings, just like fidget spinners, and they spin very nicely. So I thought, uh, why not try that in the real? And that's what I did, and it worked. Starting with an idea before doing any research, even though uh, some research would be helpful, um, just start with an idea. Once you have the idea, research into the idea. So that's kind of what I did. Um, so you said you caught one fish with it. I'm sad that I didn't get to see it. But uh, how was it like when you actually had a fish on the line? Like how did the reel like handle that? Like was it typical of what the normal reel would feel like? Or like how was right? So um, and this is from uh, this takeaway is from. Uh, not having a brake system is just like when there's no type of resistance on the fish, like once you hook the john, like it, it could just take as much line as it wanted because you know there was no resistance against it. So um, even though even though that was the case, there were workarounds like holding the line maybe is what I did, just hold the line and just uh, yank the line in rather than actually reeling the reel. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. Um, from catching the fish, that's that's how that's when I realized like. Um, how important brake systems are. So yeah. So one one more question. For you. Um, in your video, you had a shirt on that said my fishing buddy called me Dad. Yeah. Can you explain the lore behind that T-shirt? How that affected your your build process? Yeah. So that shirt uh, was very inspiring to me. Um, it was given to me by Mr. William. William gave me that shirt. Um, you know, I take pride in that. Like I'm his dad. You know, if I go out into the mountains and I don't catch a fish, dog. I'm not, I'm not worthy, bro. So I stayed, I stayed in that river 
until I seen that fish and I catch that that John. Um, so all that inspiration from catching that fish came from that shirt. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Yeah, how long did it take for you to catch that fish? <laughs> um, about probably uh, 6,000 steps into the wilderness. Um, took about like, let's see, uh, I think two and a half hours. So it was actually pretty fast, kind of, but yeah, uh, took a long time. Caught one, then left. Yeah, where were you at? Um, this place called Waterton Canyon. Yeah, it's up in uh, next to Chatfield, if you know where that is. That's up in the middle of the team. So, yeah. What kind of fish was it? Rainbow Trout. I could have, okay, I could have taken a picture of him, but he, like, swallowed the hook. So, like, the more I kept it, kept it out of the water, the more chance he had of dying. So, it's either I snap a flick for the, you know, presentation and let the fish die or just put it back. So, keep answering. Thank you. Thank you. Thank If you want to come check out some reels, right over there. I'll be over that, there. That presentation will check it out. <laughs> oh, little joke right there. Uh -huh. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So, this is basically the first one. This is fourth, this is fourth, but this is just another fourth. Uh, so this is your inspiration. Yeah, that this is what um, basically I took most of my measurements from. Uh, basically, uh, so how did yeah, you yeah, okay. yeah, so uh, let me see. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's like a click system. So this is like all these notches and stuff. Um, so all it does is like when it spins around, the more notches it is, the slower it gets. And you can um, adjust that like, like this. You can twist it one way, it's more notches, just go over this way. Did you like test more than the fourth design? Like did you test codes like three and two and one? Right, yeah, yeah. So the idea of testing all of these was um, just putting weight. Um, the actually the only one that I tested with weight was um, this one. Um, I put a lot on it, put like a weight on it, and see how much weight it could hold, a lot of weight. That's what I did, just trying to get this way. So. And you guys can touch them if you want. This is, this is how you put them together. So basically, the same design for all of them, except this one is Um Slide it in, like so. Then you got the cap. Wow. Okay. Okay. So, and, oh yeah, so this is, here, here, I'll show you guys, okay. So this is the one that's threaded. So uh, you can see the threads a little bit. Yeah. And which side was that? Was it this one? Or? Right, so it would it'd be the same thing as that. So the idea was it would slide on, and then you take this piece, and screw it. And then yeah, screw it screwed on. on. But uh, since it's 3D printed and plastic, and it's kind of trash, it needs to work. Even if this might work yeah, that's a good question. I don't, maybe, uh, I, I don't think it would have been, it was a good idea. I, what, what I might actually do in the future is um, I print another one and just use a screw and then up. So, how much long did it take when you print? Um, not that long. I'm pretty sure, I don't know, Mr. Brent, how long did it take to print? Like, the whole thing or each part? Like, like one part. Uh, probably a couple hours. Yeah, the whole thing was probably under 10 hours, I think. So, yeah. How does this one work? This, this whole yeah, okay. Here, I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys. So, look at this one. Oh, um, I cut it out of this one. Because wow. <laughs> I was, I didn't want to print another one, so I just... <laughs> but all this one was, um, this one's basically the same thing as um, this one, but this has like a connected piece. Right. And, and this one actually has a pair of it. And you can spin this one around if you guys want to pass it around. You can spin this one. So you can pass it this one fly. This one fly. Uh, <laughs> yes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to whip someone in the face, dog. Let's see. We'll, we'll, we'll all back up. Yeah. All right. 
<laughs> only got, only got this, so I don't know. It, it, it took it took him that much convincing. <laughs> we'll, we'll Yo, Mr. Lewis, can I? I'm gonna do this, okay? Uh, yeah. Super. Don't point at anything. Yeah. So that that, that definitely is broken. This one uh, was a little bit. Yeah. Uh, took him that much bigger. I can actually show you. Uh, okay. SD card full. <laughs> Yeah, so this actually has a hole in it, so that was the entire doing If I wanted to do that, I could do that. I only have half the raw live cast, so I'm definitely going to get some. Sorry, I'm not even playing. I don't know how this is going to work since I only have half, but I'm sorry, with the yes, man. Yeah. It doesn't work that well without the entire thing, but the idea is you just whip it. And then it shoots more line out, you keep giving it line. Yeah. And it really doesn't improve the line. Hot seat. Real. Yeah. Real. I should have brought the whole thing. I didn't expect you guys to. I mean, I didn't expect it to convince our YouTube. Sorry. <laughs> All right. If you want to see some designs, you can. How many SolidWorks models do you have today? Um, I had five. So this is this is there, there is no house. <laughs> this is the uh, <laughs>
Uh, I guess that's what happened. It's going to happen in jazz. Uh, we'll just going to wait until you come back. Yeah, we'll put up. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. All right. Watch the live video. You must have worked so hard to. Oh, really? It's on the OTV account. It's on the OTV account. That's crazy. <laughs> no, I, I really wish I Did you know that the average monthly income of a uh, Icelander is 770,000 krona? Really? Which is about $5,600. I wish I made that per month. Give us advice for our future. Everyone in here is senior? I'm not. That's why you should give us advice. Um, do you want to ask me a question? I don't know what what matters more, money or happiness? <laughs> money. They both matter. It's so they both they both matter, but it's up to you to determine how you balance one over the other. So I think everyone has everyone has a focus. Usually, usually people look for both in a job, but some people try to get more money, income, sacrificing enjoyment of the job. Some people try to get more enjoyment and sacrifice income. So. I sacrifice income. <laughs> <laughs> to be around you crazies. Yeah. Why are you staring at me? Because you're the craziest. Oh. <laughs> Who was the meanest in the senior part of class? I'm not answering that question. <laughs> what did you major in? Uh, fit engineering physics. Nerd. Basically physics. Why did you become a teacher? You're the meanest. Um, so I... I Majored in physics. Sorry guys, there's some solar over here for all this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I majored in physics because I liked physics and I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. And when I was a sophomore in college, I started a um, teaching assistant job. And I basically just, I, I worked that job for three years and I kind of just fell in love with teaching. And so I, there's nothing else I want to do with it. Teach, so that's what I do with it. Who's your favorite senior project student? Stop asking questions and not gonna answer. Who's your favorite senior project student? You said you said you wanted advice. Uh, probably Max. What? Oh, there's, there's Max. Max isn't even here. I'm here. Um. I was just going to say something else. Oh, this is a good advice. I think someone told this to Angelina the other day. Um, you don't have to go into college knowing what you're going to do with your life. Work, I guess, whatever you're doing after high school. I didn't I didn't actually decide I was going to teach high school until I was a senior in college. And so a lot of people figure it out in like the last two years. Some people have a good idea and then they, some people do go into college knowing and then they stick with it and that happens. A lot of people don't really know like what specific job or career they're gonna pursue until they've been there for a while. And so I feel like when you guys are at your point, a lot of people feel pressured that they need to know 